So this is the location that I've decided to shoot today. And I'm not gonna go crazy. I've bought out um, a roll of Silbera film. This is an ortho film. It's called the Silbera Orta 50. I believe it's a Russian film or a Ukrainian film. I think it's Russian, um, but a great brand. I've used it before. I've bought out my Chinon CS camera and a 28 mil lens on there's a Hanimex lens nice and cheap the whole setup here is probably about 50 quid tops and I've also got a chin on 135 mil lens as well so I'm going to do a couple of shots on this um, lens and I've also bought my release cable because I'm shooting 50 ASA so chances are I'm going to be hitting some uh, slower shutter speeds not too slow but certainly stuff I want on a handheld um, yeah and that's it so uh, that's the main thing though Silbera Auto 50 now all I need to do is do some light read readings which I'm going to be using one of my um, phone apps for that. Just do some incident reading over there on the beach huts. Dial it in, bracket my shots, go one stop over, one stop under and one normal and start with photography. So I've now changed my scene and I'm at the sea and I'm looking at a, a, one of those markers, I think they're called a port hand marker. Um, anyway, marker in the sea, I'm going to take a photograph of that. I've already redone my light metering and this time it's given me F11 at 160th of a second. So again, I'm going to bracket my shots. One of the most important things whenever you're doing seascapes, keep that horizon nice and straight, unless you're going to try and be creative and do something on the want for, for any particular reason. But uh, one thing I always do when I'm looking in the viewfinder, first, first thing I always do is make sure my horizons are straight. Any wonky horizons really does sort of, you know, make a, make a nice seascape picture look a bit naff, unless it's done for any creative reasons. So let's take these shots. And one 125th of a second. So that's the back of the beach hut's done. A little bit of seascape going on. And the last few shots I'm gonna do wouldn't be worth coming down here without actually taking pictures of the beach huts at the front. The only trouble is there's houses and stuff behind. So I have to try and find a composition where I can get low and look up, just so I don't have um, any crap in the background, really. So let's have a little walk around, see what we can get. Right, I've come down here and I've shot roughly what I, well, exactly what I wanted, really. Um, so do I continue shooting and run the rest of the film out and stuff that I'm not really gonna be interested in or shall I cut the film out of the camera when I get back in the dark room and just uh, develop what I've got save the rest for another day there's one more scene I want to look at before I leave here and uh, and then get home I'm about half hour away from home so I'm eager to get and see what these pictures look like I've already developed the negatives. I developed them in XTOL. I think it was seven minutes or seven and a half minutes. It says it on the Seal Bearer website. I followed that and I've came out with some really punchy, punchy negatives. And I was like, crikey, you know, straight away I could see that they're going to be uh, contrasty and tricky to print. I couldn't see any detail in the back of the beach hut where I should have done. So all I need to do is to make a contact sheet, have a look at what I've got, and then try and decide what photograph I want to make a print of, or two photographs maybe and then work around it from there. So uh, stick around and we'll see what happens. So this is my contact sheet that I've just printed and you can see they are quite um, <laughs> a range of different exposures. This was the normal exposure. Then I've got my one stop over and one stop under. Massive difference there, but you know, if I was to work on this, this one here, um, I've got a little bit of cloud, but my beach hut is so dark that's going to be so tricky to print. So I'm going to go with this one here. Um, I know it's going to be quite tricky. And then I've got this one as well. I quite like this shot that I took. So I've got two prints to make. Uh, so, but let's get on with this. We'll do some test strips and see how we get on. Three. Six. Nine. Fifteen. 18 seconds overall. So I'll just pop that into the developer. 
and the developer I'm using here is Photo Speeds PD5 developer. Ilford's multi grade I use also, and that seems to work quicker. But this PD5 is just a little bit slower, but it's still a good developer, so there's no rush here. So it's not as bad as I thought. I've actually got a little bit of detail um, that I can see in the back of the beach hut. So I've got my test strip here at 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 and 18 seconds. Um, this is the beach hut that I'm most concerned about. I'm not interested in this one. It's the middle one. Uh, 6 is too light. 9 is still too light. 12 is okay, but it's not not punchy enough for me uh, and 15 is looking the best on the beach hut but then I've got trouble because the uh, the white in the background and also here I can see on the top of the beach hut the wooden frame uh, which is white that's also a pure white as well so uh, let's do another test print of 15 seconds and see what I'll get. Right, so this is my second test strip at 15 seconds with a two and a half grade filter. I've started to get detail in between the panel slats on this beach hut um, but I'm too white on the wood here, and obviously the sky is way too white. There's nothing there, it's just paper, it's just white paper there. There's no detail whatsoever. So somehow I'm gonna to have to look at lowering the contrast. So what I'm gonna do now is um, use a, a grade zero filter, which is a low contrast filter, and see what I can do on another test strip. So uh, I'll do that now, and then I'll come back to this in a moment. But this is a contrast zero filter now, test strip. Um, at 3 seconds, 6, 9, 12 and 15, 18, obviously 3, 6, 9, 12 is too muddy, uh, but 15, I've just started to now get detail, 15 seconds with contrast zero, I've just started to get some detail in the wood, which is what I'm after, um, and at the same time, I need to get detail in the, in the beach hut at the back, I don't want that to be jet black, I need some detail in it if I'm going to make a print of this, so uh, I can just about see detail, let's do another test print at 15 seconds, with a contrast zero filter. So I've just done a few more test strips off camera. Uh, this one's 15 seconds with the contrast zero. It's okay, but I wanted to see what 20 seconds would give me if I could pull a little bit more of those highlights back in. Um, and that was what 20 seconds gave me there. If I started to go any more than 20 seconds, I'm gonna start losing detail in my beach hut. That's what I don't want. The wood's okay, the wood looks all right, it's just, <laughs> The paper, I could just still see the paper hasn't changed in the sky, and I know that there was detail in the sky. In fact, I made another print, I'll just show you that now. A full size print, you can see that on the camera. So I've made a full size print as well at uh, contrast zero at 20 seconds. And although the detail in the beach huts is nice, and I've got detail in this wood area, which also is nice. I've got nothing in the sky which um, there's nothing there at all you can see, in fact see it's exactly the same tone as the border on the on, around here um, so that's not going to look good at least if I can try and get something um, in the sky that uh, separates the sky from the border of the paper that would look quite nice and the only way I know how to do that is to do a little bit of pre-flashing so that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to do some pre-flashing and see if that works I don't really pre-flash a lot no one's ever shown me the technique I've only read it um, from reference books in the past, but I want to take the inertia of the paper off. I don't want that paper to be as white as it is. So I'm going to take my zero filter out. I'm going to go back to a two and a half grade filter. Stick that in there. Pull my aperture as small as possible as f16. I don't need the negative in the carryout. I'm just literally going to burst uh, light onto the paper, so it you know it kind of sensitizes it before I make my print. That should make a less contrasty print, and hopefully be able to deal with the uh, sky. I don't think I'll be able to get much detail in the sky, but at least I'll be able to differentiate the image between uh, the image and the border. So I've literally got no negative on the enlarger at all, and all I'm doing is seeing how long it takes for my piece of paper with that two and a half grey filter in there to get some kind of um, fog on it if you like or or detail it's got to be the most minimum amount just one second increments one two three four five six 
seven, eight, nine seconds. Okay, let's put that in the developer and see what that looks like. It should be a gradient of tones of gray. So this is my pre-flash test. You can see I did it for nine seconds. So I've got nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. I can't see any difference between uh, here and three. Well, obviously one, two was here. Three, I can't see any difference between one, two and three. So four is gonna to be too dark. I only wanna very, very, very slightly hit the paper with some um, light. So just to take the inertia off the paper, the, the whiteness away from the paper. But I'm gonna do a test at three seconds and one at two, and I'll just show you what I do there. So I'm just gonna do my pre-flash test. I'm gonna do one at two seconds, uh, one at three seconds. So let's put one in my back pocket. What I'm gonna do is just put a bar over the top, hit that for three seconds. Tear the corner off so I know that one's three seconds. Put it to one side. Get the other one out. Put a bar over it again. And this one's two seconds. I did one for two seconds and I couldn't see any difference in the paper at all. And what I did, I put the bar over like you see. And if there was any difference, you'd see either side of the bar a slight density in, in the paper uh, as you are here on three seconds where the bar was it covered the paper three seconds it just hit it a bit too much you probably can't see it on camera but i went another one at two and a half seconds and now i can see a very very slight it's only very faint difference where the bar was here either side is just very slightly different i can see that so i'm pretty happy at two and a half seconds so I'm now going to pre-flash some paper to do tests with at two and a half seconds, a whole load of uh, test strips at two and a half seconds. I'm going to pre-flash them and I'm going to then pre-flash a couple of sheets of paper to make my print with later on. I'll have to put those two sheets of paper in a box somewhere, keep them light tight um, because that's going to be a, a, a pre-flashed paper if you like. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to work with now, two and a half seconds. So I've just pre-flashed my test strips. I'm now going to pre-flash two sheets of paper. And these are going to be for my prints. Here they are here. Place them in the middle like so. I had one behind me back. So that's getting two and a half seconds of light with that two and a half grade filter. That's now pre-flashed. And another one. There. Okay, that's my two pieces of paper that I'm going to be using in a little while. But before I do that, I've got to use the pre-flash test strips and do the same all over again. So this is all the pre-flash paper I've been playing with. So this was my test print and I started to do some other um, tests as well. Now, the test print was two and a half grade filter. So I liked 15 seconds on my test print. So I did a whole print at 15 seconds. But as you can see, I've lost the detail in the beach hut completely, although I have managed to get rid of that um, inertia within the image and now you can start seeing the border, but I've lost the beach hut completely. So I went to a contrast zero filter and did a test that you can see here at 20 seconds. Beach hut was just a bit too light. Then I did one at 30 seconds and it looks like it's just about right. So uh, let's use my, this was a pre-flash paper. Remember I did two, I've got one left. So hopefully, See uh, contrast zero filter at 30 seconds with that last piece of paper that I pre-flashed which is sitting in the box at the moment. Hopefully that will make the print I'm after. So it's the next day now and the print's dry and you can see it's sitting there in a frame. I framed it, I'm going to put that somewhere in the house uh, if I can find some space. I quite enjoyed that darkroom session playing around with the pre-flashing, it's something that I don't often do. Now and again I might fog the paper for just a bit of fun, but uh, I really did want to try and pull some detail out from that negative. 
which I found quite tricky to do. I tried all the different contrast filters and I was playing around quite a bit before I ended up deciding to do a little bit of that pre-flashing, which is something that I've read in reference books. No one's ever showed me it before. So if any of you guys out there are experienced uh, in the dark room and did a lot of pre-flashing back in the day with, with uh, contrast papers, not the graded papers, let us know. I'd be interested to see what you say, um, you know, the correct way or the incorrect way that I was doing it. Just let me know, that'd be interesting, and also for others to read as well. As for the Silbera film range, I've shot them before, and I do like the results that I've had. However, that Auto 50 film just found uh, a little bit tricky. But there again, you know, it's the first time that I've used it, and I only took a few shots down the beach of that beach shot. So maybe I did my exposures wrong, maybe I did the developing wrong, whatever. The negative uh, did come out quite punchy, and it was down to me to try and make the best of it in the dark room, which is what I've done, try to make the best out of a, a negative that was a bit tricky to print. But I enjoyed myself, I was in the dark room and uh, got away from the TV indoors, which my wife was watching, had a couple of beers, I enjoyed it. I forgot that was another print that I did, I stuck around and, and uh, I did another print, that's another pre-flashed um, piece there that I did, you can see it's got uh, the difference between the sky and the paper without pre-flashing, that was coming out white as well. So, uh, and also I lost loads of detail in between these slats so, you know, the pre-flashing technique, as far as I know, bought that out as well. But I enjoyed myself. Another nice print there. Anyway, guys, thanks for sticking around and watching the video. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure you do so. Give it a thumbs up, this video. And also, if you are experienced in pre-flashing techniques in a dark room, stick your comments below for myself and everyone else to read. Thank you very much to the guys that support me on Patreon and all my other subscribers that I'm regularly in contact with. Uh, I do appreciate your support. I'll see you in the next video.